All right, everyone, it's uh, Dogfire. We're back for the kind of the third installment of the review, and this is me tearing into the gun. Now, I've already done a video where I've uh, talked about adjusting the feet per second on that, which is not in this review series, but will be posted. So I just did that, and now I'm kind of backing, going up backwards and going back to the review side of things. So I already have the gun somewhat disassembled. So if you saw that video, you can see how I disassembled the gun to this point. But from there, let's go in and start looking at some of the components. And I'm going to take some of the things that were already off. Um, I'm going to take off the upper, and we're going to start with the upper first. And so uh, I'm not going to go in a lot of depth on the upper. Um, it's essentially the kind of the key thing to look at. It's an AEG upper. It takes an AEG barrel. It's not proprietary like the other Tipman M4s were, where they had the proprietary barrels and the proprietary hop-ups. It's all AEG, so you can use essentially your favorite hop-up. The hop-up they provide is a, a nice, uh, you know, the typical Asian pot metal type of aluminum. Uh, the barrel is a black anodized aluminum um, that when I look down it, it appeared to be, you know, decent quality. And if you hold on a second, I'll get a tape measure. I got one around here somewhere. I don't. I'll, I'll measure this and put this in the video. But it's about a, I don't know, it's about a 300, I think, or 250 millimeter. I would, I would guess, tend to guess, somewhere around that. Oh, I have my tape measure right here. Here it is. And it's my, it's my metric one. So let's measure this. From tip to essentially the back there, we're about, it's about a 250, yeah, so it's 25 centimeters, so it's 250 millimeters. If I get this to clamp on there, and you guys can get that out of the glare. Yep, right about uh, 25 centimeters. There you go. And, uh, so it's uh, a 250 millimeter inner, inner barrel, and um, it's a standard AEG, everything standard AEG. If I go in here and I'm gonna try to get some angles on here where you can see, standard AEG upper. And the funny thing is I looked at in here and if I can point at it with my Allen, I looked at this right here and there's some, right here, there's some stamped in, or actually it's cast in words. It's really interesting. So I was looking at it and I go, huh, that says AIM, A-I-M-T-O-P. And I go, well, I'm familiar with that company. That's AIM Top Company. They're an airsoft manufacturer. They make a lot of the uh, SVGs or whatever, SVD, sniper rifles, the uh, AK-47 stuff. Uh, they have some M4 stuff. But this upper is essentially a M4 um, airsoft upper. There is nothing fancy to it that I've seen. I haven't compared it against another upper. So what's kind of neat about this is if this is all standard airsoft AEG upper, does that mean I can slip on any one I want on this? I think the answer is yes. It uses a standard hop-up. There isn't any depth things. It's, uh, it's all standard. Uh, so I'm thinking that uh, relatively easily I can uh, adapt a, uh, I don't have to adapt, I can take any of my other um, front ends or, or uppers uh, receivers that I like and slip this on. So I could have this one for CQB and then I could go slip on a larger one for a carbine or whatever different. The only thing is if I put a different barrel on, I have to go and adjust the velocity. So um, all in all, that's, uh, you know, that's not bad. Uh, the one thing I, I wasn't really impressed with is um, they've got a really, I don't know, this is a piece of plastic here. I don't know what that's for. Maybe to keep it from rattling. They got this cheap, I call it dust hider. It's the fake bolt thing. And yeah, it just fell out. It's one of these cheap metal ones. Um, you know, and they work fine. I mean, they are what they are. I'm probably just going to leave it out. I don't like it. Um, that's just not my, my taste. Um, I got the, the spring in here, and it seems to work pretty good, has pretty good uh, reaction. When this is in here, it doesn't work as nice for whatever reason. 
I had to get it all back in there. But anyway, it seems like it binds a little bit, so I don't know if this thing's a little bent or needs to be just fine-tuned a little bit. But it's, I would say it's a mid-grade AEG upper compared to some of the stuff that's out there. So enough with the upper. Let's get down to the meat of this, which is the engine, and let's start tearing into it. So here we go. There's the engine, and um, a little dust on it. Uh, I think uh, everything, how I'm looking at this, the lower is a modified, um, and I'll have to look at some of my other lowers out that I have, a modified AEG lower, M4 AEG lower. I don't think it's anything more than, I think these were all mated together. Um, they uh, just notice a couple things, like there's a little milled out spot here. I don't know why that's milled out. I don't know if it's for this or not. And it's, you know, the typical AEG lower. If you notice, it doesn't have the piece back here. So this is all, or at least the circle is milled out, and then they have a hole drilled in the top here to access that, the screws that bolt on your air adapter. They go to these guys, one there, and then one down here. It's just access ports so you can get the screws in and out. So I thought that was interesting. Um, so outside of that, I think it's just an AEG lower. So kind of cool, uh, we'll have to see. But let's tear into it. So I'm gonna tear apart uh, the other, oops, wrong Allen wrench. Where's my other Allen? Oh, there it is. Let's take out the back pin. And these are metric and I didn't, I don't have my metric one here. Let me grab my metric tool. Here, here it is. That's the right one. Yep. So there are, uh, you know, kind of annoyances that there are some certain things I don't like. And for instance, being that we use metric and American, and um, that kind of drives me nuts. So that's, uh, I could do away with that. Let's see, we're going to take off the mag catch. So the two things. I'm going to zoom this in a little bit, guys, so we can see what I'm doing here. The two things that hold this unit in is the rear pin catch and the mag catch. Those are the two key components that hold everything together. Um, obviously, when you bolt on the back uh, air adapter, that helps lock things in. Uh, but it's pretty much, that's about it. So, this is their standard, typical... The screw style, and I kind of actually like these a little bit better because uh, I feel they're a little easier to remove. Take out the pin, and the quality of this this feels like steel. So let's see if I can. Uh, uh, it's got some paint on it. I don't know if it's. Trying to scratch and get a pick. Got a pick around here, some here. I got a file. Just a little carving into it. Let's see. Uh, no, I think it's a pot metal. All right. Well, uh, that's disappointing. I wish that was steel. Um, I wish they'd make these out of steel. I think they're just a little stronger. But it's a high grade pot metal. It feels pretty, pretty quality. So. Now, I think, I take that back. When I had this thing apart last night, there's one other thing I have to do. So I have to take this bottom half off. And it's two screws, the same screws that take this off. We'll take this bottom half, so we'll go and unscrew those guys. And so this is the grip mount area, and on the AEG be the bottom of your gearbox where your motor went or your motor mount area. All right. You guys, I'm going to have um, this review posted on HPAirsoft.com. So that's HPAIRSOFT.com. I should probably put a little link up in the corner here if I remember. Okay, so real quick, that just bolts on. 
So all that is, is just a, it's heavy. It's got some mass to it. It's pretty, pretty dense. And that's what your grip bolts onto. So it's kind of nice. If you're going to damage this and strip these screws out or something like that, you, you know, you could at least uh, maybe buy another one from Tipman. Uh, one thing I like about Tipman stuff, folks, is that um, Tipman, the original company, has always been a pretty solid customer care company. And I know they sold out recently. Um, uh, GI Sports is the, I think, the owner of Tipman products now. And they've branched off in this Airsoft uh, line. I know the Tipman M4 is made in Indiana at the Tipman factory or the old factory. And um, the, yeah, in Fort Wayne, Indiana. This one, you know, on the box it says, made in Taiwan. And I, ironically, that's where AIM Top, AIM Top Airsoft is. So I'm thinking that either they're manufacturing the majority of the parts are coming from Taiwan and they're dropping an engine in. So um, I'm hoping that everything is not made in Taiwan, but uh, who knows, we'll have to see. All right, so very similar to pull out the, the engine is it slips out it's got i'm going to pull this guy off this is just a faux uh, mag release if we go look down in here see there's the selector switch and you'll see what i mean that i don't think you could have a pass through one so um well, let's look down inside oh wait so this oh this is aim top too it's right there this is aim top so it's an aim top lower so i would guess that this is an ag lower and I'm, I'm guessing that you could probably, with some modifications, which I'll probably do, because I like tweaking on things, get any lower and upper you want and just drop this engine in. So, kind of cool thing, I just offered the engine. But uh, anyway, um, kind of neat. You gotta, you'd have to modify yours with these two parts here and, and then machine out this back piece back here. Um, but I'm sure some hand tools and some files and times uh, could take care of all that. So here we go. Here is the engine. This lower uh, electronics carrier and trigger carry is a polymer, and it feels to be like that really high grade plastic, like similar to what the um, magazine uh, was uh, made out of. You have the solenoid, and these are these bullet style solenoids you're seeing on, on a lot of the guns, not the square cell solenoids. Uh, these are, and I don't have my glasses. It's a Mac, uh, these are Mac solenoids, so that's a Mac solenoid. Um, and then this right here is your selector button and switch and it's a rotating switch and then you have a um, micro switch on the inside here that looks like I got a little screw down in there it's got a little blue lock on it looks like it's adjustable I, in reality I didn't feel like it needed any adjustment and it feels like it's got some sort of like a magnetic like it's breaking free of a magnet and I bet you that's what I bet you it's not a spring I, and that's what makes that feel like you're you're tripping a sear and make it a more realistic feeling um, as I think that's why they've they've done that but um, on all four let's tear this into let's tear it into a little bit more and see what we get so uh, I'm going to take off this lower electronics portion in doing so, I gotta pull off this plug here. I'm gonna tear that up and need a couple of Allens. Here's one right here. This is his back one. Back screw off. This is a tiny screw. Put off the side, and then I have a front screw, which is right here, I think. I'm just going to drop that screw out. So I know these two screws are there for that. So we go down in here. I look, and I, I'm really thinking it's a magnet, guys. I don't see any springs in there, and I'm 
I don't know where the magnet resides. It's interesting. It's a reverse switch. So the switch is open right there and no, no, never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm yip yippy yapping for nothing. So, but anyway, it's got just nice a nice feel to it. Really nice feel. But let's get a close-up of the electronics for you guys. A little capacitor right here. That's the um, uh, connector for the solenoid. Uh, I can't see on the back. And it's got the little LED down there. That's what you see when you fire it up. But uh, that's it. And it's got some letterings there. I don't know. It's a little header pin here. I bet you that's a programming pin area. Better for USB if you were to have something like that. And the code on here is a WLZ90C02 is the number on that, whatever that means. And it looks like it was manufactured in 17. And I'm assuming around December of 17, it looks like. But anyway, uh, that's that. Takes us to this part. And so this is the engine and solenoid part. And so the next piece we'll take apart is the solenoid. And if I can read any numbers on these solenoids, I'll, I'll try to read it off. But let's go in here. Get my screws. Now I've taken this apart already once. So I know there's when you're doing this, folks, is you want to be careful that you're not, uh, you're not losing little pieces. Okay, and I can, I'll explain that here in a second. There is a little piece in here. It's actually underneath the, the red part. But there's some small pieces here. So the bottom of this guy has got two O-rings. And I don't know what size they are. Um, it could be a 003. I'm imagining they're going to be metric, which I I hate. And if they're metric, they're, they're probably a... A 1.5 millimeter uh, diameter or you know the diameter of the actual not around but the uh, thickness so taking that off and take these screws out and know where they go here this is all this is is just a solenoid housing so we could essentially unscrew this solenoid I'm gonna always do things down low guys if anything were to fall out, then I wouldn't lose it. Okay, so there's our solenoid. It's got two holes, so if we were to screw this in, line these up with the holes, an idea where they go. Whoops. If that were to be screwed in, that's obviously the front chamber hole and the rear chamber hole. And let's see, it is a. See, it says Mac there. It's a Macnoid, and I do have some numbers on here. And I need my glasses, guys, to see this. Uh, I'll take a photo of this close up. I'm going to keep everything apart and take photos of it before I put everything back together. Let's set that off to the side. So that's a solenoid. Pieces off to the side. I know this is solenoid parts. All right, so now we have four more screws and this brass thing. Don't take this brass thing out, and you'll see why later. There's no need to remove that at all. And uh, but we'll go take these screws out. Loose them all up. So kind of one of the funny things is there was very little information on this Airsoft from Airsoft GI. Actually calling them, even the text didn't have any information on it. Okay, I'm going to turn this upside down, knock out those screws, one, two, three, four. All right, and I'm going to leave, this guy I want to leave up. Let me, let me explain. In here is a check ball sitting on top of an o-ring if i get to focus 
Let me see if I can just zoom in. It may be easier. Oh. And there you go. See that little check ball on top of it? It's on top of an O-ring. And I'm going to set that off and have myself my screwdriver. And And I just pick this up with my magnet. And you'll see there's that little check ball. Set that check ball over there and then take this O-ring out and set it with the check ball. I gotta measure all these O-rings. Figure out what size they are. Alright, let me zoom back out. Whoops, the other way. Alright, so in here are longer, these are let me wipe off some of the grease on here. Um, these are just round o-rings that are stretched into these grooves okay and um, that uh, there's there aren't any special gaskets these are just long o-rings and I'm not gonna pick them out I don't know so I'll figure out what size they are here pretty soon um, I, I'm thinking they're re reasonably standard size but we'll go from there so now we're into the actual mechanism so what's left in here is I zoom out even further so I have it. So there's the front, there's the nozzle, and then you, in the back here, your velocity adjuster, uh, this is your regulator section. It's a cartridge, so it's a cartridge setup. This is the housing for it. And then there's some guts in here. And I, I'm going to stop this video on the disassembly video, and I have to take this part. I haven't taken it apart this far. And I'll do a little research, take it apart slowly, so I'm not wasting your guys' time. So with that, this is part one of disassembly, and we'll have a part two. All right, folks, the dog fire in the back for uh, the second video on the disassembly of the new Tipman Omega series airsoft uh, rifle. And so we had I, I left off before in disassembling this, the upper actually firing mechanism, the chamber, I guess, whatever we're going to call this. And... Um, and so I, I've, I, I've got, I've got to it. And so I kind of want to back up. Um, you know, all these electro pneumatic uh, uh, markers need um, some sort of um, maintenance, right? And when this is in the um, in the gun, and you remove the the upper receiver, you have access to this front area. This where where the bolt is. This is the the bolt, the bolt carrier spring. But you see these couple pins and if you get an allen in here and you should be able to break this free and unscrew this and while it's all in the gun you have to go to this disassembly this assembly level and be able to access and lubricate the essentially the moving parts of this uh, mechanism and um, being that this is a spool type uh, like a spool type of a um, uh, valve and uh, assembly is um, I recommend using a grease um, that is for airsoft so a lot of people use Dow 33 which is probably what they use in here it feels like Dow 33 to me uh, I would stick with that um, unless you're comfortable with other greases uh, to use out there uh, I use uh, a proprietary grease that I have let me get you a bottle of it This is what I use. It's called, uh, yeah, it's my product. Dog fires down a dirty cock ring lube. Yeah, it's funny. I know it's, it's niche. Uh, but this is a little small bottle of it. And I sell this. If you guys want it, you can, you can PM me or whatever on Facebook and whatever. I'll sell it to you guys. It's really good stuff. Uh, made for O-rings. Uh, but anyway, um, I would recommend under any warranty time is utilize the... Um, the correct grease. Um, the manual doesn't say anything. It doesn't say anywhere on how to lubricate this. And if you are, if you're familiar with the older um, <clears throat> Tipman M4, their first airsoft uh, um, here a couple of years ago, uh, that one's work. That one is on the based off of the uh, Model 98 Tipman Model 8 paintball gun that the, the internals are miniaturized essentially. And that works off just good old paintball oil, right? You put a couple of drops in the ASA, you gas it up, and you run it to the to the marker. A little cleaner in your barrel and stuff like that. So this, being that it has a solenoid, 
I would probably treat it the same as what like a Wolverine, um, uh, Polar Star, stuff like that that uses solenoids. Uh, sometimes that liquid oil isn't as forgiving in these and um, stuff like that. Never use WD-40. Don't use silicon oil um, like the spray because uh, it has a solvent in it that evaporates and it destroys O-rings. So don't do that. It's fine for your barrel and your hop-up bucking, but that's it. Do not use that silicon spray stuff anywhere but but in those areas. It is not good for this stuff. You'll you'll scratch your head wondering why things aren't working. But anyway, so for maintenance on that, you would just unscrew this, take this apart, and this is the with the nozzle. Let's just get a here's the nozzle. Um, this is the front cap. It's got a nozzle return spring. So as you see that as it moves forward and fires and it pushes the spring pushes it back. There are several O-rings in here. I don't know what size they are, but there are several O-rings in here. And now we have the upper chamber and this is the rest of the mechanism. So here we, that's where the nozzle resided was in there. And you can see it screws into there. It has an O-ring seal here. And, uh, and the back side is where the regulator is. Now when you're pushing this out, and this is a cartridge system, so this is just a housing for it, is you have threads here, guys, right? And the threads are, can be sharp. That's a great place to nick an O-ring, and you put everything back together with all fresh O-rings, you're all excited, and you push it in the wrong way, and you nick one of those O-rings, and it leaks. Uh, you'll be disappointed. So about the back, it has no O-rings, right? Nice and smooth. And you just want to make sure that these guys are, there's no burrs on those little holes. But we should be able to just push this right out the back. There we go, right out the back. So all this is is a tube. It's a tube and it has the ports mill on the bottom to say, hey, where the gases go. And essentially this is kind of about how this sits in there. So what it looks like is this back piece is the regulator. This is the actual spool type engine. And uh, that's, there's a little regulator adjuster. And earlier in a video when I talked about just my regulator that I felt like I turned this whole thing when I was adjusting and I did. I turned it back here and it came it was coming on off from the body here so it wasn't tightened down enough. So I actually backed it off there and spun that backwards which was pretty interesting. Um, just could have been a manufacturer these didn't tighten it down tight enough. Get some close up here. There's some sort of a it's like a rubber seal in there. I don't know. A couple of O rings up here. But you guys, guys get an idea what it looks like on the inside. But we're going to take this apart here. So, right here, we'll look at this piece first. This is the regulator. So, the interesting thing about this is you're never going to know what PSI you're running at unless you came up with some sort of device that. Um, allowed the input so this is a little tiny input hole and as it's in here it lines up with I um, actually I take that back the input hole is the inside of that Allen's got a hole through so the gas comes in here through the back this is a vent hole and what this does is while well, this is in here and it's got a corresponding vent hole here this has probably got an overpressure relief vent hole. So meaning that if you try to overpressure this, it's going to vent it off to protect the solenoid. Okay, if it gets a spike or something like that, it's going to do that. Um, and then you have, um, I think we took this apart. Got a snap ring here. I bet you it's like any other regulator out there. That's a piston top. And I bet you that's what it is. But how would you how would you know what PSI? It doesn't really matter, folks. Who cares? It's not like it's a paintball gun. We're trying to get the lowest PSI out there. The reality is this engine works off of a PSI for velocity. It doesn't work off a dwell setting or anything like that. It's merely off of a PSI. And uh, and that's how it works. So the higher the PSI, the higher your feet per second. Um, and so that's that. So this probably take the snap ring out. Uh, you probably have to service the inside there. Uh, as needed and then this back half now that's where I just unscrewed it from 
looks like it's there's another piece that's threaded in here I don't know but I'm not gonna go much further than this folks because it's just for the video I really wanted to see what this looked like on the inside so you guys could see it I don't know if those little just holes there or what that looks like a little nylon stop No, uh, that actually just oh, it does it has a little spring in it. It feels like it's got this brass shaft, it's got a spring back here, and it pops backwards or something like that. And that allows the uh, gas to transfer through the tube. And so, essentially, this is that's on there. So, that's gonna it's gonna push gas through these little holes here, and that's gonna push this forward. Uh, to a certain point and then it's finally going to release release that gas out the front and it's going to open this poppet right here and I think it's uh, if you're familiar with the so what I was told and I don't have an invert mini and uh, GI Sports or Empire or whoever you want to think of on Paintball World they came out with the invert mini the invert mini was uh, loosely based upon uh, the old MQ valve on autocockers. Very similar um, style. And actually, they have that patent out there. And GI Sports owns that patent, so that would make sense that they would utilize the Invert Mini engine and just modify it or miniaturize it for Airsoft. It's a very good engine. Actually, the, the axe, uh, the, 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 that's the uh, the newer version of the Mini, and it runs that same same engine. I do know that those paintball markers that are shooting a 68 caliber paintball uh, shoot sub 200 psi. Uh, comes out of its regulator to operate the engine. So, being that we're shooting a six millimeter BB, we probably are, are you know sub that. Um, so I'm I'm thinking that this works the same way. Uh, being that it's a one solenoid system that's so this guy right here has a, appears to either be like a dump solenoid or a transfer solenoid and essentially on the MQ valve it would uh, um, it had equal pressures to keep everything sealed up and then it would dump one chamber which then would open the valve to allow the high pressure out and um, and then it would seal this back up and then equalize the pressure again very loose explanation of how that works uh, but it works it's a very good tool very efficient tool so it'll be interesting to see um, you know as I test this how it works and on efficiency um, I'm pretty confident it's pretty low pressure but you know from there and then the other thing is it has a check a check uh, has that check ball that I talked about earlier I didn't lose it yeah it's right there and that's very reminiscent of a invert mini has a check ball also I don't, I don't remember what it does it does something but um, it does it's very similar to that so all in all kind of a, a, a wrap up I think I have everything I've talked about everything here um, the upper or the upper I'm pretty confident and I'll do some more write-ups on it if I can if I've Take these things apart and look at some other stuff. I, this is an AEG upper. I'm almost 100% positive. And I'll, I'll see if I can put some different uppers on it. I'm pretty confident this is a 100% an AEG bottom. They're both AIM, A I M T O P, uh, two words, AIM top um, products that I think are made for Tipman. And uh, they've machined out the back here and put a hole here, top and bottom. To allow for those screws for your uh, ASA adapter, but outside of that, and then obviously a little different um, switch there, so you could that would just come out. You could just swap that out. So if you wanted something different, you could probably with some modification do it. I'm sure that will be the next. You'll probably see a ton of these things custom anodized, all that good stuff. Um, the upper tube, uh, essentially this 
with your air transfer tube. It's your cartridge tube. It's a cartridge setup with the regulator. Um, trying to think. Outside of that, it's pretty simple. Um, I don't know. Tipman hasn't talked, or GS Sports hasn't talked much about how this is going to handle water. So you guys with the Tipman M4s, uh, they're not a dead product at all. Um, they're uh, they're going to fit that 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 niche crowd very well, in my opinion. Um, I don't know how water resistant this is. It doesn't look like it has any coating on it. Uh, I could see people. Uh, board manufacturers, people making different boards for these. Um, I like the idea that it's a capped rate of fire, so I think that's smart. Uh, we don't get the, the wing nuts that just start ripping on people. I think that's dumb. It's not good for the sport. And loosely based off an invert mini, what I can see. So post your comments, tell me what you think. Tell me if you want me to do some more on this. I probably will, just naturally. And you guys have a good one.